All right, so we have here the valve. Hopefully you can already get it open. We have it, uh, it's available on the Google Drive in the shared folder, SolidWorks. Uh, again, we want to start out, we look at the two lids that are already applied to our model. Uh, the objective of the lids is to enclose the uh, computational domain because what we need to mesh is where the fluid is going to be as it goes through the ball valve. So it needs to know where there's a start and where there's an end and where there's any walls that may be contained that may, may be containing the fluid. So the lids are necessary to kind of cap um, and enclose all of where our fluid is going to be located. So the lids are already a part of this model. We'll come back and use these. I want to show you how you can put your own in. Um, if you know how these are made, these are done with a sketch, just a circle at that end and then extruded slightly. What we're going to do is we're going to use the lid feature in uh, SOLIDWORKS, which makes things really easy. All right. So if you haven't already, you need to uh, make sure you add in uh, flow simulation. So again, if you go up here to add-ins or under the tools menu, but go to add-ins and make sure flow simulation is checked. Uh, you can do one side or both sides, but at least you got to do it at uh, on the current active add-ins. And you should have this tab that shows up. And with that tab selected, we're going to click on create lids. And so with create lids selected, then you want to select planar faces uh, where the openings are going to be. So we'll do one face here. And go ahead and green check that guy. And so I haven't put one on the other side, obviously. Uh, but I want to show you something here. When you're trying to enclose your geometry, you want to make sure that it is actually fully enclosed. And they have a um, check geometry button up here that actually check for that. So if we click on that, it shows all the things we have here, the lid and the, the fillet or the main body here. And we're going to check that volume. And we see here, results status failed. It's not watertight. So we, have, we aren't fully enclosed. And if we're not fully enclosed, it can't run the calculations. All right. So we can go back here, knowing that the other lid wasn't placed on here, and we'll go back and uh, create a lid. Again, selecting the same planar face here. And we'll OK that, green check. And if we go back and we check our geometry, we should see that now we're successful. The geometry is OK. All right, so we are watertight in that case. All right, so that's how you can put lids on your model. I'm going to go back and use uh, this model's original uh, lids because there's going to be things that change here in the future. The um, flanges on either end are going to get extended, uh, as you'll see. And because the lids were associated with those ends, um, we won't have errors in the future. So anyway, you can use these lids just fine in your future drawings. But for now, I'm going to uh, delete them. All right, and we'll roll back down. All right, so lids are still there. So now what we do is just go in, go in and we're going to use the wizard most of the way through here to set up our, our uh, simulation. And we'll go ahead and call this project one. And go ahead, use current. You can see here the current configuration is called the short valve, which is what we're dealing with here. Uh, we're going to work with some other ones that have some different configuration names. Go ahead and click next. Uh, obviously, declaring our unit system here, which SI is fine, and uh, you can see the units there and how they're defined. Uh, this is an internal analysis. We're not looking at external flow. It's going to be contained within our valve. And go ahead and exclude cavities without flow conditions. And you can see the other things we can do with flow simulation. We click heat, look at heat conduction, radiation. We get a time-dependent uh, case, include gravity and rotation. Uh, but again, we're just going to focus on the, using the default settings here. Go ahead and click next. Uh, here's where we pick our fluid, and we're just going to be doing basic water, so that's a liquid. So we'll go into liquid, scroll down, and add that. Flow type here, you see laminar and turbulent, so because we can expect possibly laminar or turbulent flow, we'll use this one. If you're dealing with just laminar flow or just turbulent flow, you can select one of these other ones and, and help to focus in your model a little bit. But again, we'll just stick with the default here, laminar and turbulent. And don't worry about cavitation for now. Go ahead and click next. Uh, we're not worried about thermal conditions. We're just dealing with the flow, so we can leave that as its setting and leave the roughness as the default. All right, here we can look at the kind of the initial conditions here, the pressure and the temperature. All right, basically STP there. And go ahead and click next. All right, so this is the meshing. All right, so this is the basic mesh here at the value of three. And basically, you move it one way, you're going to get um, finer mesh, a slower model. If you go the other way, you get 
more coarse mesh, but it'll run faster. But we'll leave it right at three as a nice place to start. Um, another thing we do want to do in this case, and again, we'll come back here and talk about this uh, in the next case where we'll change it, is we're going to manually specify the minimum gap thickness. If you go back here and look at our model, you can see inside there that this ball valve is partially open. And so we can see right there, we can see through there, and there's going to be this, this gap right here. We want to make sure there's lots of meshing elements in that spot so it can resolve any gradients that may be in the flow. And so we're going to specify this minimum gap size as 0 0.04 meters. Leave everything else as uh, the, the default settings, and we'll go ahead and finish there. All right. So what it does is it creates our m domain. It doesn't really show you the mesh diversion, um, but you can see the domain is going to be contained within that box. That box contains everything that goes through the opening, out the exit, and ultimately through that ball valve. We can turn that off. We don't really need it uh, to see it, so we'll go ahead and right-click on computational domain and hide. All right. Now what we need to do is set our boundary conditions. All right. So we're going to go over here to boundary conditions and right-click and go insert boundary conditions. All right. We need to select our, select our first face. So we're going to select our uh, inlet face here, but remember this is a basically a three-dimensional lid. And so we want to make sure we select the face that's on the inside where the flow or if, if there was water contained here where the water would actually touch. So we're going to right click on that surface and select other. All right? That allows us to pick stuff that's inside there. And again, we want to pick the face that's on the inside. So if we turn this sideways and we zoom in here, if we hover the first one, that's clearly not that face. That's the face, but see how it's on the outer part. It's not going to be the part that's touching the fluid contained within the valve. This is the one we want. So we'll go ahead and select this, select that one, that surface. All right. And it looks like it didn't take, oh, there it goes. My computer's just being slow. Um, and we're going to do an inlet velocity. So we'll just select velocity there, inlet, and go ahead with one meter per second. And go ahead and click OK. So this means that at this point in our valve, we're going to have one meter per second flow entering. Uh, into that space. Uh, for the other boundary condition, we're going to come to the other side and we're going to right click and insert boundary condition. Again, right click on that surface there, select other, and make sure you get the right face. We not want the one on, not the one on the outside, we want the one on the inside. So select that one. And we're going to go for our outlet, we're going to do a pressure opening and go with static pressure there. And you can see it's kind of STP conditions there. So we'll green check there. So we have our boundary conditions defined there. Go to our goals. Our goals is the place where we're going to define what we want it to record. And in this case, we're looking at the loss through our valve, and it's specifically the pressure loss. And so that's what we're going to look at here. And so we need to define the uh, goals at both the front and the back surfaces. So we'll right click on goals and we'll insert surface goals because it's going to be the inlet surface and the outlet surface where we're going to look at the pressure that we're interested in. We're interested in the total pressure. Right? So it's kind of hidden there, but we're looking at the total pressure and we'll take the uh, total average pressure. So we got minimum, average, maximum, and that's bulk. All right, so we're just going to go with the average total pressure. And again, the faces we want is the inlet and the outlet. We can go and we can right click and select other and try to do that again, but we've already done that and we can use our um, previous definitions for the inlet velocity and the static pressure uh, to do that. As you can see, if I just click on them, I only get one or the other, so hold down control and you can select the other one and get them both. We also want to make sure we create a goal for each surface because we want to look at the pressure at just this surface and the pressure at just this surface. And so we'll select that one. All right, and we can green check there. And you see we end up with our two goals over there. All right, so at this point, I think we have everything defined. So we can go ahead and run the calculation. So I'll come up here and just click on Run. And we're going to do a new calculation, uh, use all the CPUs that we have, and go ahead and run. And we'll watch this as it meshes the geometry. And now it starts doing its calculation. You can follow along what it's doing right here. You can follow calculation progress over here. 
And this is going to pop up here. So it says the vortex crosses the pressure opening. All right, so we have the uh, pressures here, and so there's, it says there's some type of vortex going in and out of this pressure opening. We don't have some, we don't have constant flow exiting out that point. It's a vortex, and that is not a good uh, place to be in your modeling. So we have a problem here in that the, the flow wants to swirl at this point, uh, but we don't want the calculator pressure based on the swirling vortex that may be there. All right, so we, what we need to do is we're going to need to extend out or basically connect a pipe to the, uh, to the exit of our valve and might as well just do it on both sides to make sure we have a uniform flow going in and out without any type of swirling. 